Hi guys, an engineer here. I need to replace the spark plugs on my 2009 Yamaha R6S. I'm going to show you how to do it. If I can figure out how. I've decided to make two videos. This is a long one for people who don't have as much mechanical experience. I have a link in the description to the shorter version if you want to switch to that version. I'll also have timestamps to show where comparable parts of the videos are to make it even easier. Now the tools you'll need are a flashlight, a very bright flashlight, see how bright that is, a spark plug gap gauge, a 3mm Allen wrench, a 5mm Allen wrench, a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, a, I used a, I used a 3 8 inch uh, Allen wrench, I used that with the, uh, the spark plug socket there, I have a wrench, I have uh, a marker, I have a Phillips screwdriver here, uh, duct tape, and a piece of paper. The spark plug on the left has the the, the two uh, angled angled uh, metal things on the the outside part, but the the new one on the right just has the the little J hook on the the outside. Well, I noticed earlier that the uh, type of spark plugs I got, the CR10 EIX, are different from the, the spark plugs that, that were recommended in the manual. The manual recommends the CR10 EK. The EK is just the, the platinum version of spark plugs, whereas the 10 EIX is the iridium spark plugs. I uh, I checked a manual at uh, at my uh, my dealership. Uh, I saw that uh, for the uh, 2009 Yamaha R6S, uh, they both work according to the uh, the manufacturer's catalog. Okay, so a couple of tips before we get started. Uh, I strongly recommend uh, labeling your screws. What I do is. Whenever I, I take a screw out, I get the, uh, the video camera out. I show myself picking up the screw, moving over to this area, and putting it in the correct spot. And putting it in a spot, it doesn't really matter where it goes. But uh, later on, if I get confused, then I just go back to, to my computer and uh, watch the, the video again, and I see what screw goes where. I just have a bad memory, so if you have a, a bad memory, then uh, that's my first tip to you. My third tip is uh, don't try to, to lean the bike up on the kickstand. If you have a, a, a rear wheel stand like I do, then uh, I very strongly recommend using it because you're going to manhandle your bike a lot in this process. It's been said that the R6 and R6S uh, tend to have some bad coils with them. You might want to, to buy some coils online before you start. Uh, I got mine online uh, used. I got four coils uh, for actually less than the price of, of uh, one new coil and uh, it seemed to work fine for me. Also later on in this process uh, you'll be getting closer to the, the uh, coolant reservoir and the air filter. I recommend uh, having some some air filter cleaner on hand uh, for when you get to the, to those parts of the video. That way you can get to it a lot more easily, and, and you can do that part of your maintenance without having to tear your bike apart again. Throughout this video, you're going to to see uh, weird little oddities. It looks like there's a piece that hadn't been removed between uh, between segments. Don't worry about it. I just uh, I did everything out of order, pretty much, but uh, I tried to, to edit the video so that uh, the way I'm presenting what to do 
is the correct order in which you should do things. So if you if you see, for example, the air hose in one scene, and then in the next scene there's no air hose, well, that's probably something I did wrong, so be sure to learn from my mistake. And I also recommend uh, going through one segment at a time, uh, watching me, for example, remove the, the seat, and then pause the video, go back out, do it yourself, then, uh, then go back to, to watching the, the video, and then watch me remove the, the tank, and then pause it, come back, do that. Let's uh, basically do that for, for the entire duration. So on that note, let's have some fun. Okay, the first thing we need to do is take the seat off. There's a, a, a bolt there that we need to remove, and there's one on the other side that we need to remove with a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. We need to take the seat off, slide it back, set it aside. Now what we do is we we uh, take the tank off. I don't I don't usually remove it. I just usually lift it up. But there are the, the two bolts there that we need to remove with a five millimeter Allen wrench. Okay, this is the bolt that holds the gas tank on. I'm going to see if I can remove it. And you can probably also figure out uh, why I recommend uh, propping your gas tank up on a, a cushion of some sort if you choose to uh, to prop your gas tank up on the uh, seating area. This is where the air filter goes. We have, uh, looks like six screws here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have that bolt there that we need to remove. Okay, at this point we can take off the air filter cover. Now we have access to the air filter. This is a, a good time to, to clean the air filter if you if you haven't done so already. I cleaned mine out till it's been a week or two ago, so uh, I don't need to, to clean or lube it. There are some good videos online. It's, it's fairly straightforward just to wash it out. I use the some K&N air filter uh, cleaner. So uh, use that, let it dry out for about about an hour, add some uh, some air filter oil, K&N air filter oil. Wait about uh, 10 minutes or so, let it done, and it's pretty easy. Okay, I took that thing, I took this thing out of there. For me it was it was pretty hard because uh, there's a let's see it was in here like this and you can see the little tab here for me it was hard to work with it was hard to, to push that in like this and then slide it out so I got a, a pair of pliers and uh, work with it that way. And we have another clamp there that we need to get rid of. Now, for the clamps, I've just uh, I've just been using some uh, some pliers. So now we take off a couple of clamps. We can take that clamp off, and there's another clamp next to it that we can take off. Okay, next step, there's that uh, clamp in the back that we need to remove. Okay, once I got rid of that clamp, the last clamp, I was able to just wiggle this thing out and I can set that one aside. Now, there are four holes in there that uh, screws and clamps and other things can fall into. Uh, this is based on an idea that uh, another YouTuber gave. He actually uh, stuffed the, the towels into each uh, each piston, but uh, well, I'm doing it the lazy way. I'm just covering it like that with just a, a paper towel and, of course, the Redneck's favorite tool. Now, to remove the air hoses, we uh, remove the the fairings, the top fairing part here. Now, I I removed it from the other side by removing the bolt here 
and the bolt here with a 3mm Allen wrench. Now to remove the air hose, we just uh, unscrew that screw there. And gee, there's another screw on the other side. Surprise, surprise, surprise. So now that we got those screws out, all we do is just ink on the air hose. And I'm going to put the right air hose on the right side of the bike. And I'm going to put the left air hose out of its misery because I can't get it out. And then I'm going to put it on the left side of the bike. Now you can do the, the same with the, uh, the fairings. You can put the left on the left and the right on the right. I didn't at first because they, they were fairly distinct and you can't really put them on the wrong side unless you put them upside down or they just look weird. These air hoses to me anyway look fairly similar so I thought I'd separate them just to reduce confusion. While you're there, notice that you're also uh, close to the, the, the coolant input. This might be a good time to, to check your coolant also. Okay, the next step is to open that plate right there. Now we do that by opening up two zip ties. There's one over there that I've already opened up, and there's another one over there that I haven't opened up yet. Now to remove the zip tie, you just put your thumbnail under the tie and then uh, just slide the tie right out. Okay, so now that we have access to the plate, we need to remove the white and red connectors you see here. For the red one, you'll see a little tab right there up on the top. All you have to do, all you have to do is pull that in, and it just slides right out. Now for the white one, uh, see that little tab that's inside there? That's what's locking it in place. So you just have to manhandle it, rock it back and forth like that a few times, and eventually it'll come out. Okay, now we have a couple of push screws that are uh, holding the, uh, the plate together. There's one over there that I've sort of loosened a little bit. And there's another one in there, sort of hiding behind the, the big wire. I don't know if you can see it there. I think got as close as I can to it. But, uh... It feels like with those you can just uh, slide your, your fingernail under them and uh, loosen them. Well, it's sort of like that. And then just uh, wiggle it out. I pulled the one out from the right side. And it looks just like this. So now we get to take the, the coils out. Now we have a total of four coils. There's this one here. This one here. There's this one, and this one. The ones in the middle are fairly easy to get out. The ones on the, the outside part, you really have to twist your hand, twist your hand to get in there. Now the good thing is, each of the coils, you can spin them around, so you can, you can uh, get to, you can get the tab to where it's more convenient that way. Now to get the cord out. Just uh, push down on the little tab out here, and then it'll just slide right out. To get the, the coils out, uh, I find it's generally better to wiggle side to side, uh, front and back, maybe a little bit around, but generally si side to side seem to work uh, better for me. And then just yank as hard as you can. Good luck. I pulled it out to there. Uh, this is what it looks like. You look in there, and that's where the spark plug is. So now to get the spark plug out of there, we can take our little uh, spark plug socket, 
put it in there just like that. At this point we can either uh, use a, a wrench as if we, we know what we're doing or we can use an Allen wrench and stick it in there. This is what I'm what I'm doing is using the Allen wrench. So now we have the spark plug in the socket. You just yank it out. So now we see the spark plugs have a cap on the end. You just need to take some ordinary pliers and remove the cap. At first it'll be a little tight. So we just remove the cap and set it aside. So this part here is what I call Ginger Rogers Day. This is the, the second day I've worked on it. I had a little uh, issue yesterday. But uh, today all we have to do is uh, just do everything we did yesterday, only uh, backwards and in high heels. Well, I don't have high heels, I just have work boots, so... I guess, uh, just imagine Fred Astaire uh, dancing with someone who wears work boots. So to put the, the plug in, you can put it into the spark plug socket and hope yours stays in. So now we just put the spark plug in the little piston like that. We twist it around. It feels like it's tight. Got a ginormous Allen wrench just to make sure. Don't over tighten it. I'll just tighten it just a little bit more. And then remove the, the spark plug socket and uh, do that three more times. I'm sure you noticed I put the Allen wrench in like this and not like this, because this can, this would give it too much torque and possibly break something. But holding it like this, there's not much not much torque there. Now the reason I use the Allen wrench is is because I need to, to penetrate that dark hole about 9 inches. So that's why I uh, make sure to use my tool for that. So the next step is we take these coils. Not sure why they call it a coil, because there's nothing round in there. And we stick them in. We stick them in to those holes. Just like that. I like to twist mine. Now to get these out, I had to, to jiggle them side to side, up and down, in a straight line. I, I find once you get it in what you think is as far as it'll go, that it's a uh, generally better to, I guess, do the same strategy. Wiggle it back in as far as you can, if you can, until the uh, rubber part on the bottom is up against the metal, the metal part of the, the, the engine there. You'll feel it go in just a little bit, a couple of times. You can feel it when it works. So now we have to reconnect the pistons. We have uh, that cord there that I've already put in. We have that cord there that goes there. We have that cord there. And we have another one there. Now you can uh, turn the, the coils around as needed to put the, the tabs back in. Uh, when they're in all the way, you'll hear a little snap. So now we try to put the, the plate back on. We have a couple of screws that you need to, to uh, put back in. It looks like that screw there goes back there. There's another screw that goes back there, where the tip of my finger is. And it also goes there. Now if you've gotten this far, uh, there's a, a little tab here that's supposed to go under the frame. Okay, so now we we put the uh, the push-in tabs into uh, back into that part of the plate and back into there. 
as you can see I've already put it back in there but not in there now make sure you get the right angle or else you'll you'll uh, you'll damage yours and I just dropped mine in here somewhere you'll have the, the white and red uh, connectors here that you'll need to connect back up with these red and white connectors here and be sure to put them through here let's see you'll see the little hole on the bottom side here there's a protrusion on the other side that that matches up with match up the, the match up the slot with the uh, protrusion Pull it real hard, and there you go. Uh, for this one, you have a little tab on one side. And you have the uh, topless part of, of the other. Put them together, and they snap in place. So now we have to put the zip ties back in. Uh, for the zip tie on the right, I've shown you the, uh, the three cables that need to be uh, tied together. Uh, let's see that zip tie. You can't really see it from here, but trust me, it's under there. <laughs> You'll want it to uh, to go around the white connection there the red connection there and also uh, those wires, the, the black connection wires right there and those go under the left air hose so the next step is to put the air hoses back in I've already put the air hose back in on the right side uh, you'll notice the little tab uh, goes on the outside part and by the way I recommend cleaning the uh, the inside of the the air pipe because all that dirt you see in there is just uh, going to go into your air filter. So if you clean it out now, then uh, that just means uh, you can write that much more uh, before you have to clean your air filter again. For the air air hose on the left, you want the text PVC on top, and you'll want that little tab sticking out of the outside of the bike. On the right side, you'll want the PVC text to be on the bottom, but you'll still want that tab to be pointing toward the outside of the bike. So I'll just put the air hose in here and hook it up to that slot. Right there, push it in a little bit. Get the correct screw. And screw it in. Do the same thing for the other side. So the next step now is to put this fairing back on. So be sure to get those tabs under the frame. We'll just slide right in. So once we've tightened it by hand, we just take our 3mm Allen wrench and we tighten it a little more with that. Now I like to uh, tighten it by hand, tighten both of these screws by hand first, and then push down on, on this side to get that little tab under the frame. There's a little tab here under, that I like to get under the frame. And then I use the Allen wrench. To tighten it and just do pretty much the, the same thing for the other side just don't uh, break your fairings like I did so the next step is to put the bottom part of the air box back on just to line it up with the uh, pistons underneath so if you haven't already I suggest uh, taking your tissues out of your pistons now I've already taken mine out, as you can see. 
Okay, we're in the home stretch now. Uh, we have this cord here that we need to put back in there. Just slide it right in. And then, then we have this pipe here with this clamp. And that fits into uh, that tab up there. For this one, you just stick the, the pipe up there. And this is where you'll you'll want that to, that pipe to go. You want the the clamp up there. It was the, hard for me to get that in. And this is for the left side of the air box. Okay, so now you'll notice on the right side. Uh, we have the uh, two air hoses here that go onto that, onto those two clamps there. And this is on the right side of the bike. Now, this one will fit in here, and this one will fit in there. And you just clamp them up, uh, just like the one on the other side. And you also have uh, this this air hose here. That air hose that connects there onto the back of uh, the air box. And you just clamp that up the same way. Now the next step is to, to put that bolt uh, back in to the air box. You'll need a, a socket wrench for that, a socket, a torque wrench, something like that to screw that in. And the next step, put the filter back on your bike thusly, get the air box, put it back on like this. Now there are six screws for that. There's one here, 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 if you can see it. Uh, here, here, and here. Let's just take the uh, Phillips screwdriver. Okay, the next step is to put the gas tank back on. Now you'll have to line it up to that little hole there. And remember to use that, uh, that huge screw to put in there. Uh, these these two screws here, the ones with the, the big heads on them, those are the screws that go there. Now a phrase that I've been waiting three days to say. This is a final step. So let's put the seat back on. Get what should be your two remaining screws. Just put them in the holes there. And there. Then fire up the bike and it should work. Be sure to like this video if you like the editing.